shipping was done pretty much the same way it had been done for centuries. Cargo was loaded onto ships barrel by barrel, crate by crate, and box by box. And it was a very expensive and slow game of maritime Tetris. And theft was rampant. They said that a dock worker earned $20 a day and as much scotch as he could carry home. And then in 1956, an American trucking magnate named Malcolm McLean invented a simple metal box that could be locked and could be used to transport goods between a truck and a ship. And once goods could be moved seamlessly and efficiently, delivery times shortened, loading and unloading costs dropped, and bigger loads could be carried. And containerization also resulted in fewer thefts, in decreased union bargaining power, in increased productivity, and reduced labor costs. And a recent study found that in the first five years after the shipping container was invented, bilateral trade increased by 320%. And this rose to a 790% increase over the next 20 years. In fact, The Economist says that the shipping container has been more of a driver of globalization than all of the trade agreements taken together over the past 50 years. This simple invention not only revolutionized the shipping industry and global trade, but arguably it changed the world. But what does this have to do with blockchain? Well, data has been described as the new global commodity, the oil of the digital era and a key driver of growth and change. And just as manufacturing relies on good quality raw materials, the global data economy is powered by real-time access to accurate data. And just like shipping containers move this global, the old global commodities in a more secure and um, efficient manner, Blockchain has the potential to provide a more efficient and secure way of transferring this new digital commodity. But what is blockchain? Well, one of the first things to know about blockchain is that there are over 100 different types of distributed ledger technology. And for the sake of expediency today, I'm going to use the generic term blockchain to refer to them generally as a group, but there are key differences between them. But one of the main things that they have in common is this architectural concept of using a shared digital ledger to disintermediate the sharing of information across an ecosystem. And they do this by providing a single source of data that all of the participants in the network can see, can contribute to, and can trust that it is accurate. An example of how this changes things is in the financial system. Currently, the financial system uses intermediaries or central bodies all of the participants trust that the records that are kept by this middleman are accurate, and they reconcile their own records against those central records. However, with blockchain, there's nobody in the middle. As with the shipping container, the information is transferred seamlessly and efficiently, but all of the participants in the network have the exact same information as the other participants, and they know that the records are accurate because they trust that the information and the technology is performing as expected. And this is an evolution from a system based on financial intermediaries to a system based on financial protocols. And it is taking out this middleman that has caused so much interest around the world in blockchain, because it creates the potential to increase efficiencies, to reduce costs, and to create new business models and markets. And although I've been talking about blockchain in a financial context, it's a flexible technology that can provide an open platform for a wide range of applications, both financial and non-financial. An example of some of the non-financial use cases being explored are in identity management, digital rights management, voting and governance systems, and electronic medical records. But the truth is that despite the potential of blockchain, it is not a panacea. And while certain use cases may benefit from this unique technology, others would do just as well with something else. Use cases that benefit from this technology usually have a number of key characteristics. Firstly, there needs to be a complex multi-party ecosystem. If you only have a small ecosystem or bilateral relationships, you don't need blockchain to track and order the movement across that ecosystem. Secondly, the parties should be at arm's length or unknown to each other. That's because it's the distance in the relationship that makes the need for blockchain's accurate shared information that much more acute. Next, the transactions should be interdependent or interrelated. And this leverages blockchain's unique ability to order and validate transactions to ensure that there's no duplication. 
The parties in the ecosystem should also want access to the same information, that shared ledger, and accuracy needs to be paramount. In fact, shared accurate data should be one of the main drivers in the use case. Lastly, if the parties want to automate processes on this shared information, for example, smart contracts, then a blockchain can deliver unique benefits. This last point is not so much a characteristic of a use case, but it's really important to note. To truly leverage the unique benefits of blockchain, you need to have a digital end-to-end -end process where the core subject of the transaction, whether you're moving information or value, is able to be transferred in digital form. And this is because any manual breaks in the process reduce the efficacy and also impact the certainty that the records are accurate. So it's clear that in certain situations, blockchain technology can deliver unique benefits. However, as a famous Flemish poet said at the turn of last century, between dreams and reality are laws and practical considerations. With new opportunities comes new challenges, and blockchain and its adoption is dependent on a number of these challenges being addressed. For example, how can we resolve the tension between the need for transparency and the desire for privacy? The transparency of the shared ledger brings with it the promise of greater integrity and accountability across an ecosystem, with increased trust amongst the participants and, and a reduction in counterparty risk. However, there's many legitimate reasons why participants may not want to have full visibility across the network. So tailored transparency needs to be developed, with slices of information shared on a need-to-know basis. And this issue has attracted significant attention in the industry, and solutions are being developed. But because it's such an early stage for the technology, it remains to be seen whether or not they can operate at, at, at an enterprise or a large scale. There's also the tension between the blockchain's immutable ledger and the EU data protection right to be forgotten or right to erasure. The GDPR rule provides an exception to this right where the data is still necessary in relation to the purpose for which it was originally collected. So think now about the blockchain, where the value and the power comes from this immutable, auditable shared ledger. Meeting data protection obligations and still achieving the original objective requires very careful consideration and design. Another challenge is that while blockchain can be transformative and disruptive, in the short to medium term, it requires integration with existing systems. And this isn't just an issue of implementation costs. There is architectural complexity with the connectivity between integration with old systems and new. And our team's work with the recent product launch of City Connect for blockchain shows that this integration can be achieved, but it required really significant thought about the legal, the operational, the commercial, and the technical implications and considerations, and very careful design. Another conundrum with blockchain is how can you ensure adequate safeguards in a real-time automated process? So much focus on blockchain is about the ability to increase the speed of a process, but there's two issues with this. Firstly, the lack of speed is not a problem. It is a symptom of a problem, and usually the problem can be found somewhere along the process. For example, in cross-border payments, the lack of speed can often be due to regulatory reporting requirements that are attached to particular currencies. Simply replacing the rails with blockchain is not going to guarantee a quicker, more efficient end-to-end -end process. Secondly, speed through automation is not always better. There needs to be consideration about whether any manual steps in the process would deliver a different or a better result. For example, in a smart contracts, a machine makes a decision based on available criteria according to pre-programmed logic and algorithms. The decision-making process is objective. Humans, on the other hand, bring subjectivity into the decision-making process. And this, of course, can have its downsides like bias and prejudice. But it also means that humans are better at taking into account context, individual circumstances, and all the shades of gray that exist in life. And last but not least, there are considerable regulatory challenges with blockchain. The money laundering challenges for currency use cases are well known. But there's a more fundamental challenge, even if you're not using a currency. And that is, as I mentioned earlier, blockchain provides a platform for redesigning business processes and models. But with this redesign comes a change in role for the participants. And rules and regulations are written on foundational knowledge about the roles that each participant plays in a particular scenario. So when the roles changes, new legal constructs need to be developed. 
and linear relationships like service provider and clients and the obligations in those relationships like due diligence need to be considered in this new non-linear construct where there is a complex ecosystem. And the challenge for regulators is how do you quickly adapt the laws to keep pace with the rapid advancement of technology, but also still write rules that can work for future developments? It's a balance between technology and neutral language that facilitates innovation, and at the same time addresses the emerging and potential risks. And it is not an easy task to undertake. So to sum it all up, just like the shipping container, Blockchain has disruptive potential to reduce costs, increase efficiencies, and create new business models and markets. However, it is not a panacea, and it is not a solution in the box. As with any new technology, it brings with it a new set of opportunities and challenges. But to see widespread adoption of blockchain and to turn those dreams into reality, it requires very thoughtful consideration of laws and practical implications. Thank you.